Good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and call our Board of Commissioners meeting for Monday, May 1st to order. Before uh, we move on into the agenda, I want to make one announcement. For those of you who are here for the uh, to hear the Trinitas rezone, it's my understanding that we are going to have a request in just a little bit to have that continued to our May 15th, I'm sorry, May, May, 15th. May 15th meeting. So with that, would you all rise and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is the approval of our minutes from the April 17th. Board of Commissioners meeting. Mr. President, I'll make a motion we approve those minutes. As second. Submitted. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And that motion is approved. Next are the, uh, the accounts payable vouchers for Mr. April 19th through May 1, 2023. So move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And that motion passes. Next up, we have a uh, presentation of payroll for both uh, April 14th and April 28th of 2023. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the payroll for those two dates as submitted. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes. <laughs> okay, so we, <clears throat> we have two bids for the animal control project um, that were um, taken in on our special meeting on Friday. So with that, I'll make a motion that we accept the bid for um, for um, aluminum door frames and storefront to Central Indiana Glass at Glazing for $137,500 and for uh, heating, ventilating, air conditioning contract to Fluid Technologies for $568,000. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, accept <coughs> the bids as outlined. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign and that motion passes. Mr. President, I move that we hear Ordinance 2023-09-CMZ2885. Shane Alvarez requests a rezoning 1.5 residential lot. Second. Mr. Hiddle. Thank you, David Hiddle with the Area Plan Commission um, with five cases before you. The first uh, is a rezoning from Mr. Shane Albrecht's. This was heard and recommended for approval by the plan commission at their April 19th meeting, um, unanimous recommendation for approval. This is in the um, unincorporated town of Stockwell. It is a rezoning lot that consists of two lots. The eastern one is improved with the house. The western one is unimproved and is quite a bit smaller than the eastern one. The request would be to rezone from R1, which is our kind of base level low density single family dwelling district to R1B, which is the district that goes better in more compact urban environments, small town neighborhood environments. Um, essentially by doing so, the, uh, Mr. Mr. Albrecht would be able to develop the western lot um, if this is rezoned to R1B. It would allow him to move an existing property line a little bit to the east so that the house still meets setback requirements and all that, but it um, opens up buildability for the western lot. This is very much in line with what the Stockwell town plan, which was adopted last year, recommends in terms of in encouraging infill development rather than uh, perimeter residential development. So we're supportive of this request. And again, it was recommended uh, 15 to 0 for approval by the Planning Commission. Okay. Anything from the petitioner? Uh, 
Hi, I'm Shane Albrecht, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on it. Any questions for Mr. Albrecht? Just a, just a comment that um, when I grew up, my aunt and uncle lived in that property, and so I spent many a, many a holiday there. Really? So I'm okay. excited about what you're doing. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Would anybody from the audience uh, be interested in making comments either for or against the rezone as outlined? Seeing none. Murtal? Yes. Byers? Yes. Brown? Yes. Ordinance 2023-09 CM passes 3-0. Mr. Hiddle. Mr. President, I move that we hear Ordinance 2023-10-ZM. Second. Tomish Developer, NB to R3. Thank you. This rezoning request would rezone four and a quarter acres from NB, neighborhood business, to R3, multifamily development. This property is located at the intersection of um, 231 and Veterans Memorial Parkway. It's at the southeast corner of that intersection. It's been zoned NB for decades and has never been developed for neighborhood business use. It is surrounded to the north and south by R3 zoning. To the south, it's undeveloped, and to the north, across Veterans Memorial Parkway, you have Southern Winds developed multifamily complex. This request would consolidate the NB with the R3, create a unified R3 <coughs> district along that intersection. Um, staff is comfortable with this given, again, the, the intersection being a, uh, involving two major thoroughfares. Multifamily development is typically appropriate in such a, such a situation, and it would create, uh, it would allow the, the area to be built rather than stay vacant um, by com combining it with the existing R3. So we are supportive, as was the Area Plan Commission. That, again, was a 15 to 0 vote at their April 19th meeting. Any questions for Mr. Hill? Would you, anyone from the public like to comment? I'm sorry, petitioner. Good morning, Kevin Riley with Riley and Teeter and Schreier representing the petitioner. Um, I won't rehash what Mr. Hiddle said. I agree with every, all of his points. I did want to mention that the plan is to develop this for multifamily market rate. Um, we did receive uh, unanimous recommendation from the board, and we uh, are requesting your approval. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions for the petitioner? Anyone from the public like to comment on this rezone? Seeing none. Martal? Yes. Byers? Yes. Brown? Yes. Ordinance 2023-10-CM passes 3-0. to zero. Okay, next we will hear Ordinance 2023-11-CM. Next on the agenda. Do we need to put it on the table first and then? Um, yeah, I think, I think you'll initiate it and then if there is a request to continue, then you'll consider that motion. Mr. President, I'll make a motion. We hear Ordinance 2023-11-CM, Trinitas Development. Second. <coughs> Ryan London with Riling Teeter and Shire here on behalf of Trinitas Development, LLC. The petitioner respectfully requests that we continue this matter to the next meeting, um, which is the 15th. Mr. President, I'll make a motion. We continue this um, this ordinance to the May 15th meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to continue this ordinance to the May 15th meeting. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. And that motion passes. Mr. President, I move we hear ordinance 2023-12-CM, archive properties R1 to R3. I'll second that. Thank you, David Hiddle, again with the Area Plan Commission. This request involves 26 and a half acres. Um, 
currently zoned R1 for single family development, currently under crop production. Um, it's an area that's never been improved with any um, built structure. The request is to rezone to R3 to allow for a multifamily development. Um, here, staff has concerns that the, the request does not coincide with the comp plan, which recommends residential expansion, and that presumably means um, single family uh, development, residential expansion. That comp plan is from 1981, which is one of the reasons that we're currently amending it. Our um, assertion here is that this would represent a pretty significant change from, from what is available in the area in terms of development and zoning and what the comp plan, the, the current pending sitting comp plan, if you will, recommends. And we think that this type of, of uh, change or amendment in land use for this area being pretty significant should be subject to the, the, the determinations of the of the pending comp plan. We're working with Wabash Township and Tippecanoe Tip Township concurrently. That comp plan will be done later this year, and we feel that um, any decision of this order should be subject to the, the full vetting and review that goes into the, the comp plan process. So, um, absent a continuance or a withdrawal to bring this back following completion of the comp plan, staff recommends denial. This was heard also at the April 19th APC meeting and um, was recommended for approval by a 12 to 3 vote. Thank you. Petitioner? <coughs> Brian Munden with Ryland Teeter and Schreier here on behalf of the Petitioner Archview Properties LLC. Handed you some um, exhibits showing a, a preliminary site plan for what um, our client has planned. If this is rezoned, um, this is conceptual at this time, so um, it's not set in stone. Um, but to give you an idea of the type of development we have in mind, um, on the third page there are some elevations, um, and then throughout there are also um, the list of amenities that this type of development would have, which. Um, that list is extensive, um, shows these are high-end finishes, high-end uh, amenities. Um, some of these um, renderings are from, and photos are from other successful projects uh, of Archview. Um, we understand that there is a comprehensive plan being discussed, but as we explained at the Area Plan Commission, um, I don't think, given the current state of housing in our, our county, that. Um, it would be appropriate to wait for that to be completed before we start adding housing stock, um, even of R3. Um, I understand that there's not this type of, of housing available in the area, which is a good thing because it provides some diversity for um, people to, to live in different types of products. Um, so um, utilities um, to the site are available from Indiana American Water and American Suburban. Um, that has been a question that's been raised. Um, we would respectfully request your vote of approval. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions for Mr. London? I don't. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone from the public like to comment uh, in opposition to the rezone? In support of the rezone? Seeing none. Murtaugh? Yes. Byers? Yes. Brown? Yes. Ordinance 2023-12 CM passes 3 to 0. Mr. President, I move we hear Ordinance 2023-13 CM Buckingham Properties R1 to R3. Second. Second, I'm sorry. Mr. Hiddle? <laughs> Thank you. Last case of the day for us. This is a request to rezone 22, a little over 22 acres from R1 to R3, very similar in many facets to the previous case. Um, in fact, the, the lot, the parcel in question is just north and west of the previous lot. Um, it is currently in crop production, has never been improved. 
and um, is recommended, as was the previous um, rezoning parcel for residential expansion from the 1981 plan. Again, staff's assertion here is that this rezoning is premature and should wait until the, the several next coming months are through and the, the new plan is adopted, which gives us better guidance, more up-to-date and better vetted guidance on, on what should happen in and around this area. Um, for that reason, we, we suggest that this case be denied. It was heard by the APC also on April 19th and was recommended for approval by a 13 to 3 vote. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Hiddle? Petitioner? Thank you. Ryan Munden with Ryland Teeter and Schreier here on behalf of Petitioner Buckingham Properties LLC. Um, handed you some concept designs on this project as well. Um, as you can see, these are Again, high-end finishes and amenities. Um, this is not like the last project I failed to mention on it. Um, these are not going to be marketed to students. Um, Buckingham is also not new to this area. They have developed the Century at Purdue Research Park, which is complete in 2020, so they have completed a successful project here locally. Um, again, on the, the comp plan, um, we don't believe it's appropriate to wait for that to be complete given the, the current state of housing in our community. So we would respectfully request approval. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Would anyone from the public like to comment uh, in opposition to the rezone as requested? Would anyone like to speak in favor of? Good morning. If you Good would morning. just uh, state your name and sign in if you haven't already. I will do so, sir. My name is Kent Parkinson. I live at 5516 West, 1200 South in Brookston, Indiana. I have been a resident of Tippecanoe County and White County my entire life. I represent two-thirds majority of the trustee of the trust of the tr beneficiaries of the Parkinson Family Trust, which owns this property. This property has been in the Parkinson family for over 60 years. And as a young man, I farmed it with my family. We, appro we approve of this project. My parents bought this project as part of their growing farming operation. It is a nice piece of property and it would be very well suited for the type of development that Buckingham is presenting. Having been a resident of this area my entire life, I'm very attuned with what goes on in Tippecanoe County, West Lafayette, and Purdue University. This property sits just north of the Purdue Research Park and is really, really well set for improved housing for that area as well as the entire county. Purdue University brings a lot of foreign and international people to this area. As a result of that, whenever there is an economic downturn in the country, Purdue brings people to this area, high-end people to this area, that keeps the economy pumping. So we rarely see the type of economic downturns here in Tippecanoe County that are seen in other parts of the country. And having had the ability in my career to travel throughout the country and around the world, this is a very nice place to live. As a result of that, I believe it's really appropriate to bring this type of housing to this part of the county because it will continue to draw high-end professionals to the area and help the Purdue Research Park grow and develop and be a cornerstone of a research area within the United States. And might I remind you that Purdue University brings in more foreign graduate students than any other institution in the country. Bradley and Buckingham are class act. We're very, very impressed with the projects they've done in the past, and the Parkinson family is very proud and pleased to be part of a project of this caliber. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Parkinson. Anyone else? 
I, I will just comment that <clears throat> this request, just like our previous request, um, you know, I do, I am appreciative and um, understand the work that APC is doing on the comprehensive planning for uh, Wabash and Tippecanoe New Townships, and, and that is very, very important. But, you know, as many of us in the room know that there is a significant, significant housing shortage in Tippecanoe New County. Um, this type of housing is needed, and I think it's appropriate to move forward. I think that these two projects are, are great projects and um, to hold these projects up even for a few months to wait for that study to be complete um, would be detrimental to the community so I will be supportive okay thank you Commissioner Jennifer Murtaugh yes Byers yes Brown yes when it's 2023-13 CM passes 3 to 0 Next up, Mr. Spencer, highway. Good morning. I have a morning. couple of things for the agenda this morning. The first thing is the, the maintenance division of the county highway department requests that we go to our four, our four 10 hour days on uh, Monday, May 22nd and return to the five eight hour days on Monday, September 11, 2023. How do we normally handle this? Is it normally a motion and a vote, or just, is this just an FYI? Yeah, I think it's a motion and a vote. Okay. <clears throat> so, Mike can really clear a room. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? You, you can, can really, really clear go. a room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did a good job with the agenda setting it up. <laughs> Mr. President, I'll make a motion. We approve the highway maintenance uh, division summer hours as outlined. Second. I have a motion and a second to alter the summer hours as outlined. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And that motion passes. Thank you. Next thing I have is a reimbursable utility relocation agreement with Tipmont. And this is for our, our work on County Road 450 East and 500 South project. Their current poles are in a... Uh, in their easement and we need them to move so we have to have a relocation agreement with them. Mr. President, I move we approve this utility agreement with Tepmont in the amount of $123,434.34. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the highway utility agreement. Any <coughs> further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And the motion passes. The last thing I have is a permit to close or block a county road from Faith. Uh, that's a, a race for hope. It's a 5K run. It's through uh, uh, Brookfield Heights subdivision, and which are county roads. It's been approved by the sheriff's office, and the proper insurance forms are submitted also. Mr. President, I'll make a motion. We approve the permit to close um, as stated. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the permit as stated. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I would like to add that that's Saturday, Saturday June 3rd. And no, no opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay, we have three contracts for the animal shelter project. Yes. So these are on bids that have already been accepted. We have the final contract to um, submit. First one is Houston Electric for electrical work in the amount of $557,931. I'll make a motion we approve as stated. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract with Houston Electric. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. The second one, again, for the animal shelter. This one's for floor covering with new concepts in the amount of $224,625. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract with New Concepts, Inc. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. And the third is for site work at the project with TDH contractors in the amount of $599,978. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract with TDH contractors, LLC. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. And now the last one. Um, is uh, for Winco Construction Company for the concrete work in the amount of $428,218. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract for concrete work with Winco Construction Company. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning. Cindy Shockey here. I'm requesting that we table that, if you don't mind, okay. until next meeting. I um, didn't quite get the copy back on Friday like I was supposed to with the approved changes, so we're going to wait till next time. That's all right? Very good. Consider it tabled. Yeah, well, you don't need to table it. You just don't take had, any action. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Amy. I'm, um, I'm here to ask to split another full-time position into two regular part-time positions. Primarily, I'm not receiving any applications for full-time, and I have interest for part-time. Um, it's been a long two years, but <laughs> it seems like it's starting to break. I don't know how long it'll last. But. So I think we should just put you on as a permanent. <laughs> <laughs> addition it to the that agenda. Way. Believe me, I wish I had a crystal ball and could. I had one full time person I hired, he stayed four and a half months, which really wasn't worth the time he was there. But. Mr. President, I'll make a motion we convert as the second deputy public defender position from full time to two um, regular part time public defenders. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. The motion passes. Thank you. You have a rather lengthy agenda for us this I morning, do. Sharon. I do. I would like to ask permission to apply for the Patrick Leahy Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant for the Community Corrections Department and the Sheriff's Department requesting to cover portions of the needed bulletproof vest. Okay. Move to grant the permission as stated. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Same sign. And that motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Any, do we have any unfinished or new business from the board uh, it, it, we'll, we'll do public comment here in just a second okay we do have reports on file from the clerk the treasurer weights and measures and those will be available in our office immediately following the meeting and now we'll take public comment if you would just state your name address and sign in, please. Yes, good morning. My name is Stephen Riggs. I reside in Tippecanoe County. I was raised in Tippecanoe County, um, and I have some documents to submit, and my remarks will only take 60 seconds or less. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am here today with a deep sense of regret, but an overriding belief that the activities of the Sheriff's Department are a matter of public concern. On March 31st uh, of this year, my wife, who's here in, in the, uh, the gallery, um, we were robbed. Uh, someone broke into our house and stole our safe. Uh, we contacted the Sheriff's Department immediately. We were out of state seeking medical treatment, and we identified the principal suspect of the robbery, which happens to be a person named Brandon McLean who lives with the daughter of a senior officer in the Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Department. 
um, on the very next business day, on April 3rd, we went down to the Sheriff's Department and asked to speak with Bob Goldsmith, who I believe is present here um, in the room today. Um, Bob Goldsmith uh, did not meet with us, but called us on the phone and did offer to us that if we thought it was necessary to, uh, that we could have this matter referred to the Indiana State Police. Because we believe the Tippecanoe County Sheriff had a, a, the paramount concern of the safety and security of members of our community, uh, at that time we declined. Um, by April 21st, we had not yet met with the investigative detective, although he did call us after we spoke to Bob and said that he had spoken immediately to Captain Hangey, who is the father of Brooke Hangey, the man that Braden, the woman that Braden McLean lives with. So we delivered a letter on April 21st to Bob Goldsmith, um, and we asked him to refer this to the state police, and we asked him to respond to us at his first available opportunity. Um, he did not. We have not heard from the investigating detective, although he came out 90 minutes after we delivered the letter to Bob Goldsmith, said he would come back the next day. We've not heard, we've not spoken to him again, and earlier today, um, I delivered this letter that's dated May 1st to the Sheriff's Department, to the Tippecanoe County Prosecutors, to the State Police, and uh, to WLFI-TV and the Lafayette Journal and Courier. In fact, at quarter till 10, when we walked in, I handed Bob Goldsmith a copy himself, and he has not yet decided to speak to us. There is an active conflict of interest in the Sheriff's Department that is rendering the person who robbed our house um, basically safe from harm. Uh, in fact, uh, after delivery of the letter today, I have a phone message from the Indiana State Police First Sergeant Jerry Holman on my cell phone saying that he has contacted the Sheriff's Department because we've sent letters, this letter to both the State Police Post District and Patrick Harrington um, because the fact is that Braden McLean had previously broken into our garage, our, our, our farm address and Eisenhower Road and has admitted to me to my face that he's broken into our house and nothing was done then and nothing is being done now. According to the state police, they've contacted Bob Goldsmith. He has refused to communicate with us. We have no closure. Uh, we are victims of a crime seeking justice, and we find it unacceptable that the sheriff's department is refusing the offer of the state police and has refused to communicate with us in any meaningful fashion with regard to the safety and security of our home. And we believe that is a matter of public importance that we have to then present in other, in other areas. I'm happy to answer any questions. We are profoundly disappointed and the service that we are getting and wanted to make a public note of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riggs. Okay, any other public comment? You can step up to the microphone, please, and identify yourself and sign in. So where do I sign? Uh, I think it's on the podium. Thank you. Okay, so um, here to try and get the ordinance changed for um, dangerous dogs in Tippecanoe County. <coughs> and uh, I sent emails to the commissioners about experiences that I've had, and I brought some police reports with me. And I sent those police reports to the commissioner's email about experiences I've had with dangerous dogs. When I lived in Modern Air Trailer Court, uh, I was walking my dog in the, in the trailer park and a dog came out from somebody's yard and attacked my dog, bit it on the neck and wouldn't let go. It took me about 10 minutes to free my dog. And I contacted the uh, animal control in Tippecanoe County and he said he was going to do something against the dog and the owner, and he never he never did anything. And that dog, you know, just it didn't have any any consequences to the dog or owner. And then a, about six months later, did the same thing to another dog, and grabbed onto the neck, wouldn't let go, and that dog had to get vet, veterinary help, and my dog did too. And then there was another incident in the trailer park where. This lady has a pit bull and just lets it run all over the trailer court. And, he's, and this is a new animal control officer. He said he was going to do something to the dog. He didn't. I had a third incident about a month and a half ago where 
a dangerous dog came into my yard and it killed a stray cat and uh, then uh, the I called 911 and 911 and an uh, officer came out got the dog back to where it belonged and the animal control officer called me a day or two later and said the dog was going to be put to sleep and so then I followed up with him and he told me nothing at all was going to be done to that dog and that was the fourth time that um, that dog had either bit another animal or a person so when I found out he wasn't going to really do anything I contacted the it's adjoining mobile home park Maples and I live in 52 mobile home estates and she couldn't tell me whether they were going to do anything to the dog but she said that was like the fourth complaint so um, I really urged her to do something with the dog and I drove by that trailer quite a few times in the past month and I haven't seen it so maybe they maybe the uh, landlord did do something but I went and online and I looked up that ordinance and I don't think that ordinance is tough enough on dangerous animals because it doesn't really seem like there's much punishment when something happens when it when a dog attacks a person or an animal and uh, well, I think that, especially if an anim if a if a domestic animal is killed, like what happened in my yard, that the dog should be put to sleep. And they did, you know, I don't know. It just seems like this ordinance is kind of wishy-washy, and it doesn't really hold the owner or the dogs accountable when an attack happens. You know, I think there should be stricter guidelines. Like if a person gets bit. The least that ha should happen, I think, is that the dog should be impounded and then there should be a decision made. Where the way that I see the law reads now, there's just not a whole lot of accountability for the, for the owner or the animals. And, you know, I don't know. Um, do you have access to these emails that I sent you? Because I sent, you know, and I, have, I brought the police reports with me. And I also brought... Um, what our guidelines are in our mobile home park and we're not supposed to have any dogs over 25 pounds and uh, but that dog came from another another area but I don't know is there any way that th this ordinance can change to make it stricter but I'm glad you brought that up because what is underway right now uh, in fact it started a few weeks ago and that is the review process of uh, not just our ordinance, but the ordinances of the of the cities, mm -hmm. uh, and and making sure that those ordinances are better aligned between jurisdictions. Because sometimes folks don't understand that we have right now we have three independent ordinances that deal with animal right. control measures, and they're all different. Yeah. So every it, I feel safe in saying, and I've been involved. This is my third third or fourth review in this process over a number of years and and every time it you know we find things that just aren't working and we try to we try to shore those up and that's what we would like to do with with what you're presenting to us today it would be very helpful if following the meeting if you'd stop by our office and make sure that we've got copies of all of those and it would be nice to see what the rules are that uh, that your landlord imposes out there as well I can't comment for uh, you know won't comment for the sheriff or the animal control officer he's not here right now I know we have tasked him with a great deal of work he's one person for yeah. all of Tippecanoe County yeah. and as our county has grown obviously the needs in that uh, in that specific area of expertise have grown as as well and, and we're kind of at the the point right now we're probably going to have to address some of those things sooner than later when it comes to just personnel and being able to to manage what we have but there is a plan underway right now we're looking at the the current ordinances in fact had a meeting two weeks ago um, and have another one to, to be scheduled in the very near future so uh, I appreciate what you brought to our attention I, it is a little confusing so you're saying one of the animals what the one of the last incidents the dog was going to be put to sleep and then it wasn't right yeah the the Animal control officer told me he talked to the owner and they told him they were going to put the dog to sleep over the weekend. So I went and drove over there about a week or two later and the dog was still on the porch without any collar or anything or any muzzle. 
And I called him, and he, in so many words, told me he wasn't going to do anything to the dog. So I ended up contacting the, the landlord over at Maples Park, and she couldn't tell me what she was going to do. But I drove over there several times, and I never seen the dog again. So hopefully they did something with that dog. You know. Is it when you say on the porch? Is it restrained on the porch, or? Well, it's just got a gate on the porch with like these. There's a like one inch boards coming down, and they're kind of spaced out. So the, the day it got out, I guess one of the kids opened the gate and it started running around and killed the cat in my yard. But, hmm. um, okay. But did you say you wanted me to make sure you had the reports that I brought with me afterwards? Yeah, I'm, if, if you can just, our office is right across the hallway, just stop over there. We'll, we'll have somebody get copies of okay. those so that we're sure that we have everything. And is there a way um, you can keep in contact with me about the laws, whether they're going to change or not? Do you want me to go over there now? Or? Yeah. yeah, we'll be and, we'll be over in just a few minutes. And if okay, we hear, just want me, what's that? Go ahead. If we, when we hear any revisions in the ordinance, it'll be done through one of these meetings. In a public meeting, so but we can keep you attuned to when we will oh, okay. be hearing that. All right, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Anyone else? Okay. Move to adjourn. We are adjourned.